Are you interested in starting to work with Vue, Vite, Vtest, or Playwright? Maybe you want to use all of those. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can get started running each of them lightning fast. Let's get started. Hey chatters, my name is Brendan, and in today's episode of Dev Chatter, we're going to set up a test project using Vue. It's going to be set up to use Vite. We're going to do our unit testing with vtest. We're going to have end-to-end -end testing in Playwright, and we're going to use ESLint and Prettier in our project. Let's jump into VS Code. Once you open VS Code, the first thing you're going to want to do is set up your project. To do that, go ahead and type npm init and then view at latest. And that's going to initialize the latest version of a view project. Once you do that, it's going to go ahead and ask you a couple of questions. It's going to want to know your project name and your package name. Go ahead and type those in, and then you decide if you want to use TypeScript or JavaScript. After that, you can decide if you want JSX support, and you're asked if you want view router. If you're just learning, don't worry about those. Next, it asks about state management, and then we're going to say yes to vtest unit testing, and we're going to say playwright for our end-to-end -end testing. Add linting and prettier support as well. Once you do that, it's going to give you some advice for operations you can run next. I recommend you go into the app, install it, and run dev. So we're going to go ahead and run npm install, and it's going to install all the packages that are now required. Once you've done that, go ahead into the terminal and say npm run dev. And that's going to run the project in development mode. It's going to be on localhost. You can go ahead and click the link. It'll bring it up in your browser. And congratulations, you've got a view website. Once you do, you can take a look in this folder and you'll see all the different files it created. It created a Vite config file where everything about how this project is set up is in there. Additionally, you can see that it put in an alias with the at sign. You can take a look at the Playwright config file. This has the information for Playwright. These are going to be your end-to-end -end tests. If you take a look at package.json, you'll notice it has scripts for unit testing, end-to-end -end testing, and the lint check. These are all those options that we tried. If you do an npm run test unit, like you see me doing here, and it will attempt to run any unit tests that you have in this project. You'll notice that this one has one test file and one test, and they pass. That's expected. It's a default project. The next thing we're going to want to do is take a look at our end-to-end -end test. Do an npm run and then test colon e to e to run your unit test projects. This is a standard convention used in most view projects, so the test colon e to e and the test colon unit are the way that it does unit and end-to-end -end test separation. We're using vtest for our unit testing and playwright for our end-to-end -end testing. When it runs, it's actually going to spin up a bunch of browsers. We told view when it was running to install the browsers. Because we did that, it actually has a couple to run. Once this finishes, it's going to give us a report. We can do a command npx playwright show report that will spin up a browser running that report. It also saved the file, so you could just look at that, but this is a way to get it hosted. When you run that file, it'll open up this page, you'll be able to click on it, and you'll see a report of the tests, and you'll notice it ran in Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. So it was confirming that a few different browsers worked. And it starts doing that out of the box. So you're not stuck with just, oh, I tested it in Chrome. <laughs> not like you've never done that before. There are a couple of other files it put in here. It put a default prettier file in, no rules in there. It's got an ESLint file as well. Uh, and you can take a look at some of the other stuff that's in here. Notice the Playwright report folder, which is gray by default because it's ignored, has the HTML. The view spec file over here is our playwright test. If you take a look at this, you'll notice it does a couple of things. The first thing it does is say, visit the root URL and confirm that the H1 says you did it, which is the current state of this page. Now, obviously, for a more robust test, you're going to want to test for more than just that. But this gets you started writing playwright. So now you can go to the documentation and learn how to write more of their tests. Wow. That template made it so easy to set up exactly what we wanted. That project is ready to get started immediately. And if you're one of my viewers that watches some of my .NET content, you'll know that our project sometimes includes a client app inside of our server app. This can be set up inside of that app the same way we set up any other client app. You just put it in that folder and set up a proxy to show this. 
Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Dev Chatter. If you enjoyed this content, keep in mind I make tons of videos about all kinds of web development topics and other technical stuff. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, like this video, tell me what your favorite thing was. I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day and happy coding.